What is the biggest lesson that betting has taught you? Money comes and goes. It is a scam when you don't allow everyone to operate on fair terms. We are the Robin Hoods of sports betting. We take something back from the rich bookies and enable our customers to beat them instead. It goes up, it goes down. You need to stay liquid at all times in order to keep making money. Uh, maybe not overestimate yourself too early and think you have an edge in anything that's not proven. Uh, betting itself, you know, it's, it's given me a lot of opportunities outside of betting. And I guess something I've take from, learned from that is like, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And stop thinking that everyone that always come up with you with this great idea, great investment opportunity is that good because it's just not. Um, but uh, within betting, I think the most, the most important thing that I've learned is you need to be very conservative when it comes to your staking because it's so easy to go from being high up to high up to go down and edges can change so fast. Something might be working for, you know, one season, new season, new players, different team factors comes in and, uh, you never know like what the next season is going to bring. So you need to be also prepared for a downswing, just like in poker, it goes up, it goes down. I've always taken bigger risks than most people, I guess. Um, so I think it's just more about maybe being a bit more conservative uh, on, in general. Of course, you can increase, you can take, sh like in poker, you take shots. Like I might be playing 510 regularly and all of a sudden a great opportunity arises at 5,000. So I'm going to play there. But if I lose one or two buy-ins, it's not like, I mean, I'm going to have to go back to playing 2-5 again because I got enough aside for that. Same with betting. If you have a great, some great spots that you really think is good opportunities, you can stake those higher. But you shouldn't do that too often. And you need to be really certain about those spots when you increase your sizing. So go for that. Like basically stick to whatever's been working for you and uh, don't try out too much new stuff with big percentage of your bankrolls. Beginner, I mean, by far the best thing you could do is just start using trade my sports, understand how the markets are working. And uh, yeah, like that's how I started. And I think it gives you enough information to start understanding things on your own. But I think also as you go further, it's a lot easier if you have other people you can work with, discuss with and learn from. And also hopefully you can learn something to them also. In a way, not having the ego to refuse to go down in stakes if, you know, hit a downer hits. Because I think a lot of people have that ego like, oh, I used to be betting for 40,000, 50,000 a game. Now I'm betting for 10,000 a game. Mm -hmm. But it's also like just being okay with it and just thinking like, look, I, if I, when I went on big downswings, like it affected me more than I wish it did. And I think that's just something I'm not that looking for anymore. Like I, I'm happy where I'm at in life and I'm happy what I'm earning from this. And I'm not trying to make millions every single month and have those massive swings. Yeah, because you, I mean, you said before uh, when we were going through your uh, statistics from your last couple of years sports betting yeah. on football, um, how you lost 50K and then you you know you added more yeah. 50k another 50k like are you proud of those moments that you didn't freak out and think all right i'm stopping no well i mean losing is always going to happen in any type of gambling and uh like i was pretty certain i was happy with the like edges i was having i was happy with uh, the bets i was having how like the odds moved throughout the game and everything so for that reason i was cool with it and I thought it was just a matter of time before it's going to turn around but it's not like I stuck it like put in like hundreds of thousands every time like oh I need to make this back next month yeah. like I know this is a long-term game and you can't really yeah. chase losses like the variance is going to go your way eventually yeah so in like summary you're most proud of the fact that you've remained level-headed through ups and downs yeah, yeah. cool and the same way like when I've gone on upswings now, like I take money out of the accounts instead of just trying to build and build and build. Cause I'm just thinking, well, 
it's better to have money also elsewhere. And if betting somehow turns and all of a sudden I lose, lose the edge in the market, I don't risk like losing 80% of my bankroll before I figure it, figure it out. So just staying at a level where I'm comfortable betting and, you know, adjusting the stakes according to how things goes. To be honest, I'm very happy with how I handled my, let's call it young life. Like in poker, I was always very strict with the table selection. I might not have been the best poker player, but I always put myself in games where I was a favorite to make money. Uh, I didn't take too many shots. And whenever I moved up in stake, I always lost, it felt like. So for that reason, I was always very conservative with moving up in stakes and risking money because, you know, being 18, 20 and having like hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's a lot of money. And uh, it all came from starting with $30 online in poker. So, uh, and even though when I started earning okay money in poker, I was working at a gas station earning like, how much is it like $12 an hour? And I had always had money set aside for whatever I wanted to do in life, but I never touched my gambling money because that to me was kind of like investment money that can potentially grow huge. So instead of buying like an expensive car, like some people would do or do those kind of things. Like I just stayed kind of, I would say down to earth. I spent the only thing I spent a bit of money on was like traveling, uh, you know, being 18 and paying, well, I guess it's normal these days, like a couple, like $1,200 a month for a house shared with four others. So we paid like almost 5,000 combined. That was my biggest expenses at the time. So, uh, but at the same time back then was even making like 20 to $40,000 a month. So things were, go the money was rolling in, but they weren't going out because I knew I would need more money in order to progress my career.